That's my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Margie! Margie! Yes, Dad? Don't do that. I have a surprise for you. A surprise? Uh-huh. Now, I want the biggest smile you can give. How's that? Perfect. Now, I'm going to count one, two, three, and tell you the surprise. You ready? Okay. One, two, three. Freddy's coming for dinner. Oh, Dad, what have you got against Freddy? What have I got against Freddy? Plenty. I won't mention the fact that he hasn't any drive, any gumption, any backbone, that he can't hold a job. I won't mention any of those things. No. Whatever you do, don't mention any of those things you just mentioned. I'll just give you some of the minor things, the little things that make me want to hide out in my room and nail up the door every time he comes here. And for future reference, write them down. Okay, I will. And I'll keep this little document just to prove how wrong you are. You mean how right I am. Item number one, my hat. I don't know what he's got against it, but he always manages to mutilate it somehow. <laughs> Item number two, at the dinner table. I don't know what's in store for us tonight, but the last time his whole steak ended up in my lap. And just for good measure, I'll throw in another little item. After dinner, he'll do something to make it impossible for me to read my paper in peace. Okay, Patty, just remember, this is your idea. You're going to feel pretty silly when the evening is over and Freddie hasn't done a single one of these things. Wonderful dinner, Margie. Don't you think so, Mr. Albright? Oh, yes, yes. Margie, can you please pass me the sugar? Oh, I'll get it, I'll get it. Oh, some cream sugar. Sorry, Mr. Albright. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Oh, think nothing of it. Think nothing of it, Freddy. And here he just buzzed me. No, Freddie, no, no. But Margie, you know how your father hates mosquitoes. I know, Freddie, but you stay right here. Don't move. I'll get the spray. Sorry, Mr. Albright. There was a mosquito, but... Go home, Freddy. Go home. I was only trying to help. What's the matter? Items one, two, and three. And bonus item, channel selector. Go home, Freddy. But go on, have your laugh, and get it over with. I don't have to laugh. The winning team can always afford to be generous. You found fault with every fellow I've ever gone with. That's where you're wrong. The fact that Freddy irks me when he's around is only a small part of it. You're my daughter, and in my opinion, bright and intelligent. And I think you ought to be able to do a little better than Freddy Wilson, that's all. And what do you mean by a little better than Freddy Wilson? Well, a fellow with a future, someone who's going to get some place in life. Ambitious, aggressive, affirmative, triple A. Ambitious, aggressive... What are you doing? I'm going to memorize that description so I can try and find this fair-haired boy. It's useless trying to talk to you. I'm going to bed. 
Say, maybe I could put an ad in the paper or run some of those spot announcements on radio and television. (laughs) Sorry. Oh, hi, Betty. Where's my father? I thought I'd drive him home tonight. Sorry, Miss Albright. Can't stop to talk. Have to talk while I work. Your father went to a Turkish bath to soothe his shattered nerves. Shattered nerves? Yes, that's exactly what he said. Oh, what's wrong with him? What happened? Miss Fuller, Miss Fuller, where are you? I'm wasting, Miss Fuller. That's what happened to your father. That's what's happened to all of us. Mr. Honeywell's nephew, Dillard Crumley III. Snap it up, Miss Fuller. You've been filing those things for eight minutes now. They should have been done seconds ago. Yes, Mr. Crumb. Crumbly. Crumbly. Grief. My alarm went off four and a half seconds late. Well, I'll be back in a moment, Miss Fuller, with some more things for you. Step it up, step it up. He's fantastic. What's he supposed to be around here? An efficiency expert, right out of college, reorganizing the whole place. He started at nine o'clock this morning, and everything has been happening ever since. Tell me, Betty, would you say Dillard Crumley III was ambitious, aggressive, and affirmative? What an understatement. Well, what do you know? A triple A man. Yeah, triple A. Appalling, aggravating, and asinine. Miss Fuller! Miss Fuller! Where are you? Time's wasting, Miss Fuller. Not on that side, Mr. Crumley. On this side. Why over here? And who are you? I'm Margie Albright, Mr. Albright's daughter. But no time for introductions. Got to make time count. That's what I always say. Now, if you put the papers on this side, Miss Fuller wastes time reaching for them. She files with her left hand because she's left-handed. And I'm surprised you don't notice things like that, Mr. Crumley. Good grief. Heaven only knows how many valuable seconds have been wasted away right here today. Miss Fuller? Yes? How many other left-handed girls around this place? None that I know of, sir. Uh, Except there is Hazel Miller, Mr. Duncan's secretary. She has a mole on her right shoulder. A mole on her right shoulder? Why do you tell me that? Now, don't tell me you can't figure out something for that lazy old mole to do. (laughs) Oh, very good. A bit of humor is excellent for office morale, but let's not waste too much time on it. Now, back to work. Well, I'm deeply indebted to you, Miss Albright. My pleasure. All I have to dash. I have to inspect the waste paper baskets to see if anyone's throwing away good paper clips. Wait! I'll tell you. If there's anything I can't stand, it's waste. Amazing. You know, I've never met a girl quite like you before. In my book, you're strictly triple-A, Mr. Crumley. By gingerbread, I think you and I are going to hit it off efficiently. Side by side like twin rockets. But come, the paper clips. (laughs) Hi, Dad. Sorry about last night. Mm, Forget it, honey. And don't ask me why I look so beat. I don't want to talk about it. All right, sweetie. Wait till you hear the surprise I have for you. I found it. What are you talking about? It happened today. He came into my life like a meteor. He has everything you said he should and more. He's aggressive, ambitious, oceans of money, and if he isn't triple A. Margie, are you talking about a fellow? (laughs) What a fellow. Uh, I have a date with him at 8 sharp. Well, this boy really sounds like something. (laughs) He's something, all right. It's hard to describe him. He's so wonderful. Well, who is he? What's his name? I'm anxious to meet him. Roberta will want to meet him, too. She'll be over here in a little while. You'll meet him in exactly ten seconds. He said he'd be here at eight sharp. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Come on. Good evening, all right. seemed surprised to see me, Margie. Didn't you tell him I was coming? No, Dillard. I wanted to surprise him. Well, it's nice to see your home surroundings, Albright. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, well, won't you come in? The way a man's home is managed frequently influences the matter in which he works. Speed up things around the house and he becomes accustomed to moving faster. Oh, Dad, aren't you happy? Albright, I'm going to strap this pedometer on you and really show you how to save some steps. Now, sit down, Albright. Just think. Dillard and I are going to spend every spare fraction of a second together. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> oh, Roberta, come on in and join the gate of the living room, which is uh, exactly uh, 
uh, 47 millimeters from here. What are you jabbering about? And, and what's that thing? It's a pedometer. Or if you prefer, a goody-goody. It's a, It tells you exactly how far you walk a meter. Well, what's the idea? Well, I'm learning how to save steps at home to put to good use at the office. Uh, Dylan, uh, this is Miss Townsend. Roberta, this is Dylan Crummy III. Briefly, I'm pleased. Well, same here. Uh, rapidly. Uh, Dylan is an efficiency expert. He's reorganizing our office. Uh, Margie said she'd be ready to go at 8.15 on the dot. I hope she doesn't disappoint me. I'm ready. Magnificent. Dillard's taking me to the International Office Equipment Show. Yes, all the latest time-saving devices. Well, shall we dash? Bye. I can't understand it. That fellow doesn't seem like Margie's type. He doesn't seem like anybody's type. Oh, Margie and I had another round about Freddy last night. Oh? I told her I thought she should go with a fellow with some aggressiveness, but I didn't mean Dillard Crumley III. In other words, you asked for it. What do you mean? Fern, do I have to spell it out? In a million years, Margie wouldn't go for a character like that Dillard. But I'll bet she keeps right on dating him and bringing him here until you beg her to bring back that wonderful, wonderful Freddy. Oh, so that's her little game. Okay, if she wants me to think that she wants Dillard Crumley III, then I'll give her Dillard Crumley III. Oh, no, Vern, whatever you're thinking, don't do it. Margie's as stubborn as you are, and if you start something, there's no telling where it'll end. Don't worry, she'll call it quits when I do what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, good morning, Dillard. Morning, Albright. Glad to find you here. I want to have a word with you. Just a second, all right. The item I picked up at the show last night. I'm going to try it out in here and possibly order them for all the phones if it works out. Yes. Miss Fuller, quickly now, ring Mr. Albright's phone. Watch this very carefully. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Fuller. How do you like that, Albright? Three operations at the same time. Wonderful. A minute saved is a minute earned, I always say. Well, from now on. Good thinking, all right. Now, what's on your mind? But make it brief. I'll come right to the point. I'm very happy to welcome you as my future son-in-law. Son-in-law? <laughs> I've judged the situation, have I? Margie woke me up last night and raved about you. Said you were the only man in the world for her. Crumley, you're not toying with my daughter's affections, I hope. Oh, no, no, sir. Nothing like that, I assure you. <laughs> well, fine. Then you'll be getting married any day now. All right, Gingerbread. Marge and I would make a winning team. And teams are always more efficient than individuals. All right, Gingerbread. All right, to save time, I'd like to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage right here and now. Well, this is a little sudden, but, uh, but you've talked me into it. You can ask Margie tonight. There's Somebody's somebody at the, the door. door. <laughs> would you care to see who it is? No, dear. I'd like you to see who it is. Good evening, Margie. I've come over to ask you a question, and I'd like to clean it up as quickly as possible. Certainly, Dillard. Let's go in the living room. Oh, hello, Dillard. Hi, Albright. Well, Margie, let's not waste any time. Your father's told me how you feel about me, and, well, I think you're the most efficient girl I've ever encountered. So I've come over to ask you to marry me. Isn't that wonderful, sweetheart? <laughs> marry you? Yes. We'll make a buzz all the team. <laughs> She's speechless, but that's the way a woman usually reacts when that great moment arrives. No use wasting any time, I always say. I suggest we have the wedding as soon as possible. Excellent idea. Would it fit into your schedule tomorrow? Then it's all set. I'll see who it is. Hi, Mr. Albright. Come in, Freddie, my lad. Glad to see me, huh? <laughs> I can truthfully say that your presence here at this particular time gives me an added pleasure that I didn't expect. I pick up the license at 9 a.m. sharp. Zip into the judge's chambers at 9, 10 sharp, and that's it. And by careful juggling of our time, we may be able to wangle a weekend honeymoon in less than two months. Uh, Dillard, uh, this is Freddie Wilson, Margie's uh, former suitor. And, uh, Freddie, this is Dillard Crumley III, Margie's fiancé. Fiancé? We're getting married tomorrow. Goodbye, Margie, dear. Uh, say, what about an early breakfast here tomorrow morning before the wedding? 
my last breakfast with my baby before she becomes Mrs. Crumley. Excellent. <laughs> Shall we say eight sharp? Eight sharp. Son? Fine. Dad? Buzzsaw. <laughs> Why, uh, honey, what's wrong? Dad, do you really want me to marry him? Well, certainly not, if you don't think as much of him as you said. He'll, uh, he'll probably come and live with us for a while. I guess you'll enjoy having him around. He really is a load of laughs, isn't he? <laughs> well, as long as you care so much for him, darling, I'll learn to get along with him. I'd forget all about him if I even thought you didn't want me to marry him. But you said you thought he was wonderful. If you didn't mean it, why, we'll call the whole thing off. It's a little early, but I think I'll go to bed so I'll be nice and fresh when your future son-in-law arrives in the morning. Yeah, it's a splendid idea. Night, Daddy. Good night, honey. How come you aren't asleep? How come you aren't asleep? Something worrying you? Certainly not. It's just that I find this book so interesting. Oh. Dad. Hmm? Dad, you always say you're both mother and father to me. Yes, honey. What about it? Will you forget you're my father and be my mother? Will you, just for a few minutes, please? Yes, baby. I'm your mother. Now, what is it? Now, remember, your mom, Dad, is it even in the house? I wonder where the old goat could be at this later. <laughs> mom. <laughs> mom, I'm in a terrible jam, and it's all because my father is so darn stubborn. Now, wait a minute. But don't forget, your mom. All right, go on. Well, it wouldn't be so bad if I weren't stubborn myself, but with Dad so stubborn and me so stubborn, I'm afraid something horrible is going to happen unless you can help me, Mom. Well, what is it? Mom, I met an awful bore named Dillard Crumley III, and I knew Dad couldn't stand him, so I started going with him to make Dad realize that Freddie Wilson isn't such a bad egg. But somehow I think Dad caught on, and now unless you can help me, Mom, I'm going to marry that droop Dillard because I'm just as stubborn as Dad, and neither one of us will give in. You mean you wouldn't have given in? No, I would have held out till the last second trying to make Dad give in. Whew. Baby, am I glad you came to Mama. What'll we do, Mom? You leave that stubborn old father of yours to me, and when he comes home tonight, I'll put my foot down and tell him I refuse to let you marry that droop, and that'll take care of that. Oh, Mom, I knew you were the only one who could help me. You're wonderful. And just between you and me, I want to tell you something else. What do you want to tell me, baby? I think my dad's the most wonderful person in the world. Oh. Well, speaking as your mother, I can honestly say that I agree. <laughs> Oh, Margie, now can I be your father again? Yes, Mom, be Dad. Hi, Margie. Hi, Dad, what do you know? Just got balled out by your mother. The wedding is out. Oh, that's too bad. I like Dillard so much. So do I. Wonderful kid, that Dillard. How are we going to get rid of him? By gingerbread, that's right. He'll be here at eight. Eight sharp. What'll we do? I don't know. And don't ask your mother, because she doesn't know either. Hey, wait. Dillard's whole idea of life is speed. Efficiency, right? Right. I wonder if he could ever get too much speed. What do you mean? Well, it's going to take a lot of practice, but we're going to give young Mr. Crumley so much speed and efficiency, he'll spend the rest of his life admiring snails. Get up and meet me in the kitchen. It's going to be a long night. Now hurry, Dad. Say a 30 second breakfast. That's what I said, Dillard, my boy. A 30 second breakfast. That must be efficiency. Yes, sir. I'm making no blunder marrying your daughter, all right. Well, this is it milk, sugar, cream, cereal, uh, individual coffee urns, jam, uh, butter, uh, automatic toaster. Oh, this is just a simple part of the breakfast. It gets much more exciting when we get into the soft boiled eggs and the uh, waffles with sticky syrup. But margin starts you off slowly until you catch on. This is fantastic. You mean you actually eat breakfast in 30 seconds? Morning, Dillard. Morning, Margie. Ready, Dad? Ready. You better watch this just once. With your mind for speed, I'm sure you'll catch on without any trouble at all. Let's get started. 
say gold when your second hand comes up, Dillard. We like to check ourselves every now and then, make sure we're not slipping. All right, Margie. Get ready. Set. Go. <laughs> You may just as well get used to the way your wife serves breakfast. You're going to be married a long time, and the sooner you get used to each other's ways, the better. Ready? I'm not sure I caught on to all of it. Don't worry, you'll get it. Get set? Really nothing to it, I imagine. Go! you ever want to have breakfast with Margie after you're married, you've got to do better than that. You're usually so efficient, Dillard. Now, pull yourself together. This is so simple. Wait till I have one of Margie's dinners. Three full courses, 63 and 210 seconds. Now, let's try it again. Ready? Get set. Go! I'll go get dressed for the wedding while Dad runs you through breakfast a few more times. No, no, no. No, I don't want to do it again. Oh, please, I, I can't do it. I won't do it. I'm leaving. What do you mean you're leaving? But, Dillard, we're getting married in a few minutes. I can't. I just can't. Oh, forgive me, Mr. Albright, but, but I'm not worthy. I'm not efficient enough. Besides, I'd starve to death. Well, my conniving little beauty, how does it feel to be jilted? Terrific. You were wonderful. <laughs> the efficient Albrights are back to normal again. Say, hey, maybe we should settle that other little problem. Hmm? What other little problem? Wedding. Really? Margie, let's not start that again. Oh, so you're going to give me more trouble. I know how to fix you. Mom! Mom! Oh, well, there you are. Now, cut that out. Mom, I've got a problem. You're going to have to have another talk with Pop. Ha, 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 ha. 